What's happening, Carolina fans? Welcome to Two Fans in the Stands, a podcast related to all things Carolina Panthers and North Carolina Tar Heels. I'm your co-host, Tony. And I'm your co-host, CJ. Let's go. CJ, what's happening, fam? How you feeling today? Feeling good, cousin. How you doing? Man, I can't call. I got six of one hand and half a dozen the other. I guess I call it even. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Hey, is there any updates to this week's injury report or transactions headed into our week three matchup against the Saints? Yes, Christian McCaffrey was added to the uh, injury report today with stiffness in his ankle. But all things point to him being able to play this weekend. You know, he actually okay. – uh, posted that he felt like if he went and took a leak that he'd end up on the injury report. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure that he is fine and uh, he'll play this weekend. And All also right. the Panthers signed Raheem Blackshear off of the Buffalo Bills practice squad. And he's a running back out of Virginia tech. So maybe he's being brought in to help us out on some of the woes that we're having on these uh, kickoff returns. So we'll see. Yeah. I like that pickup. I, I remember uh, Raheem Blackshear. He, I think he played his last two years at Virginia Tech after he uh, started at Rutgers. Not mm. not a real big guy and not a super fast guy, but he's like small, compact. And um, I remember he, he had an okay game against us in the preseason, that final preseason game. So I, yeah, I did. think that's probably where um, Carolina got – you know, got the information from by uh, watching them in the preseason. Like they always say, what you do, you you put on, you put in a tape together for the other 31 teams in the league so you never know who's watching. It look like it's going to pay off for the young man. It sure is. Let's hope so because, I mean, he, he was definitely running with some purpose against us. So we'll see how that go. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We hope definitely hope it pays off. So tell me this, what what are what are two or three things you're looking for in this week's matchup with the Saints? I got I got about three things. What I'm looking for against the Saints is better offensive line play. Better play from the offense and defense when it counts. Okay. And also, my biggest thing, better play calling. Better oh. play calling, better play calling, better play calling. Yeah, I remember we talked about that. <laughs> yeah, we did. Well, Tony, uh, what are you looking forward to this weekend versus the Saints? Well, me, I got uh three things that I'm looking forward to as well. My number one is uh, applying pressure to Jameis Winston. Number two will be the defensive backs making plays. And number three is better quarterback play from Baker Mayfield. I think I believe those three things, to, in my opinion, would be a uh, key to us being uh, victorious come Sunday. So mm-hmm. let's get right into it. So your number one uh, thing that you're looking forward to uh, Sunday will be, tell me again, because I, I clearly forgot. Better play calling, better play calling, better play calling. You remember now? Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> how how could I forget? That that that's that's like three and one, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a big one for me. So tell us how you feel about that. What what what's up with the play calling? It may be a situation, and we talked about this earlier. It may be a situation where they just don't have Ben McAdoo's offense down pat. You know, I, I heard agree. that it was a really long offense um a long offensive playbook and it was a lot to take in so maybe they don't have it all down pat yet they don't have the the, the schemes you know perfected to where we as fans would like to see you know but right. just in my humble opinion i just want them to get a little more creative you know you got dj Moore, bring him in motion give him a jet sweep something Something creative. Put Christian McCaffrey in the slot. You know, it, it just looks it, it just looks like handoff, you know, five step drop. And then hell, it seems like every time Baker tries to take a quick three step drop, he gets a ball batted down. 
You know, now that was a little better versus the Giants. Right. I, I would give them credit. It was it wasn't week one. Week one, it seemed like, you know, he had every other pass batted down in the first half. But, you know, and, and, and it was better. I, I will give them credit. But just from my perspective, I just need them to. Well, I, I want them to just it, it feels like they're not being creative enough. They're, they're not putting people in better positions to produce. Well, you you don't think you don't think that may be the the reason behind that is because that the offense haven't gotten off to a good start in in week one or two. I I think when once they once they have some consistency there and able to get off on the or you know on the right foot, I think that will allow for them to open up the playbook a little more. I just feel like you you can't really open up the playbook where you can't even get settled with what you originally have called. Because I think, you know, when you look at it in the National Football League, each team has about 15 scripted plays offensively that they start the game off with. It's like their first 15 plays, no, no, matter, no matter what the defenses are running or anything like that, they got their first 10 to 15 plays scripted. Well, hell, yeah. if you can't get but three or four of those plays, you know, if you can't get into but three or four of those plays, I mean, you you behind the eight ball. So I, I'm not I'm not trying to make yeah. no excuse for them, but I just think that if they just got off on a better foot, you know, and, yeah. and had some consistency from the beginning, that they will be able to get into these uh you know into this playbook a, l- a little more because in the second half. The offense typically have looked better than what they have in the first half once they got settled, once they got going. Mm-hmm. And then, to me, yeah. you've you seen a little bit of the creativity that can be there. Uh, you know what? For once, you know, I, I'm I'm not going to argue with anything you just said. I, I, I'm not, <laughs> Hallelujah! You definitely make a valid point. <laughs> you, you definitely make a valid point there. It, it is hard. You know, it's hard to get the truck rolling I when know, you start off on four I'm, flats. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm but don't don't pat yourself on the back too hard I'm now. We got more more to this. discuss, okay, more opportunities right. to disagree. Yeah, just okay, take that okay. win and, and let's let's move on. <laughs> All right, be humble. I'm gonna be humble. <laughs> I'm gonna be humble. All right. So what 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 what's your number two? Ah, uh, let me let me see. My number two would be the offensive line. Okay, the talk offensive about line, it. The offensive line, the offensive line, offensive line. And on it. it and, and again, it may be another situation they don't, they haven't had time to gel yet. They haven't had time to gel, and we also talked about this earlier too. Rookie left tackle, three new starters. Well, oh, two new starters. Um, you got Corbett and. Well, I said four. I said four new starters because Pat Affleck is really supposed to be playing guard, and he's playing center right now because Bradley Bozeman is, is still hurt. This so. okay. This, this this is true, but yeah, and then you got Moten, you know, on the right side. But if. If the offensive line can put together a complete game, it will go a long way to us getting in the win column and ending this nine-game skid that we're currently on. I've said this before, and I've said this – I'll say it again. Carolina's offensive line does not have to be perfect. You know, I I don't expect them to be one of the best offensive lines in the league. Right. But – if we can get, you know, I, I would I would take somewhere in the middle of the pack, you know, somewhere around say fifteenth in the league, fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth. I I will take that. Okay. But what they have to do, and and this will you know slide me into my last point when we get to it. But they've got to get better in key situations. They, they they've got to get better in key situations when it's those you have to have it plays. Baker has to have time. He has to stay on his feet. He has to be able 
you know, he has to be able to get the ball to his receivers. The offensive line has to step up. They have to. I agree. I agree with that. But, you know, like like I said before, they when you have four new starters on the offensive line, it's gonna take time to jail. Period. Yeah. I, I don't I don't care if you have five all pros on that, you know, on the line or, or whatnot. They are they all are new they're new to each other. And they all are playing in a new offensive scheme, and that that's yeah. everybody on offense. Every everything five is all moved. pros would help though, <laughs> right? <laughs> I get it, <laughs> facts. <laughs> but you know, e- everybody's playing in a new offensive scheme. Even the quarterback, like Baker, didn't come to the team until two weeks before training camp. So, mm-hmm. no, no, no matter how how much of the offense that they know right now to me is always different. No matter what yeah. you say during preseason, no matter what you say during training camp is always, it always tells a true story when those live bullets start flying. You know what I'm saying? So yes, it, it, it it's going to take time, but what I can say, what I will say, the offensive line look a hell of a lot better than it did last year. It oh, looked preach. a hell of a lot better than it did last year. So for me, that that was that that's enough to say that we got to win with the offensive line right there. Yeah. And and yeah. each week, I think they're going to show better consistency, and they're going to get better with time. Yeah, and let me cut you off, but you to add to that, full game wise, they are leaps and bounds better than last season. You right, know, full, full game, but you know my my point. We they they've got to get better. You know when we need it, when it counts. That's what I hope they. That's what I hope they can can work on. I hope they can accomplish this week. But yes, I I agree. As far as just you know game by game, it's yeah. it's a, it's a lot better to work with than than what we had all of last year and the year before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with you on that one. So, give me your third one. What, what's number three? This is for offense and defense. They have to make the plays when we need them. Have to make plays when they need them. Fact. Perfect example. Last week, Giants game, third down, and I want to say what was it? Maybe like five or six, and you got Icky. You got your defensive end, safety on the line. Defensive end drops back. Safety shoots the gap. Icky doesn't know what to do quick enough to get over there to get a hand on the safety. Safety sacks Baker, and that's 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 basically the end of the game because the Giants yeah. had just got the field goal. And we were driving, was looking good. Again, one of those plays where we need this, we need this right now, we couldn't finish. Flip it next possession, go to the defense. Okay. Okay. Third down and what was it? Four? Second and four. My bad. Second and four. Okay. We ain't got no more timeouts. Second down and four. Here goes Matt Ionitis jumping across the line of scrimmage. Yeah, offside. I think it was like two oh. two minutes, six seconds left. It was like right before two minute one or something like that, wasn't it? It was either right before the two minute warning or right after one one or the other. But e- either yeah. either way, that was that that was all she wrote after that. That that, that was all <laughs> she wrote. And I yeah. will even take it a step further and say, when Carolina came out second half, took the ball down the field, scored on that first possession of uh, that we had. Oh lord, yeah. That's that's the, that's the time right there when the defense. You know what? We've scored. We can't give them any kind of any kind of motivation you know, any kind of momentum to get back in this game, we need to shut them down on this drive. And they let Daniel Jones walk straight down the field. That straight down the field. me up. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, who, who, who you telling? That, who you that telling? burned me up. And offensively and defensively, Carolina is not that great on third down. They're in the bottom, I want to say they're 29th of offense and maybe middle of the road, somewhere in the top. Uh, twenty, you know, as far as defense 
uh, third down efficiency goals. But we are giving up. You, you know, you look throughout that game, we made stops on third down all throughout the first half, you know, a lot of the second half. But my point is when it counts, we have we need to start. We need to keep making them, but we really need to make the ones that count because that's what's costing us these games this year. And that's both sides of the ball. Yeah. My, my whole thing with that, that one thing we talked about this, we need to keep our foot on our, on their neck when we have it there. Yes. We need to keep applying pressure. For the life of me, I, I don't understand why Phil Snow does this. And I was bringing it, I, w- I was mentioning it to my wife the other day because, you know, she graduated from Baylor. And I was talking about Go how it seems like we um we take pressure off of a team once we get a lead. It's like as soon as we get yes. a lead, no matter whether it's three points, six points, or seven points, we want to change. Like it's like like we're playing prevent defense. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what happened to that same defensive team that held Saquon Barkley to zero yards rushing in the first half and Daniel yeah. Jones only sixty yards passing? You know what I'm saying? Yep. What, what what happened to that team? You know, it's like as soon as we went down and scored, they came right back and scored on us. And it was just like it, it fell apart at that point. And yeah, my wife said, really she said, I'm not surprised. She said, because this is the same thing that Phil Snow did when he was at Baylor. We would have a lead and he would take his foot off the team neck and they would get right back in it. And here we are scrambling in the last mm-hmm you know, two or three minutes of the game trying to bring out a win. And I yeah. thought about it. I was like, you know what? You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. It's like you you preach that the team need to, to do better than stopping the run. They need to tackle better. You mm-hmm. saw how good it paid off for you in the first half. In the first half. Why in the yeah. hell would you want to revert, you know, back to what you was doing before? I, I don't understand him. I, I and I and I think one of the things is he need to get out of his mind about running this college style defense, this three three five defense. You know, where mm-hmm. you got three down linemen, three linebackers, and and five DBs. You know, having three safeties on the field that may work mm-hmm. in college, but this the NFL, bro. This the NFL. Sure you need to you stop step your game up. Yeah, you need to stop. Jeremy Chen is sitting back there like he's a free safety. Jeremy Chen is not a free safety. That's what you got Xavier Woods for. Jeremy mm-hmm. Chen is a hybrid safety slash linebacker that is good in the box. He needs to be playing yeah. in the box. Cam Chancellor 2.0. That's mm-hmm. what Jeremy Chen is. Agreed. You need to play him as such. Agreed. I ain't going to get my blood pressure up, you know, because, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to finish watching the rest of the game. So I'm I'm, I'm going to digress. I'm going to digress. It's all good. Passion, man. We, we get it. Passion. Yeah, that, that that's how that's how I feel about it. If somebody asked me, that's what I say. But ain't nobody asked me, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, we've uh, we, we we've heard mine. Uh, what about yours? Well, you know, like I said, number one for me is applying pressure to Jameis Winston. And I say mm-hmm. that because when we've done that, we've put, we, we've had success against New Orleans or even we, when he was in Tampa Bay. When we applied yep. pressure to him, it got him uncomfortable in the pocket, which forced and led him to making turnovers, throwing interceptions. I think Brian Burns got a strip sack from him last year or the year before last. But, mm-hmm. you know, basically he's prone to turnovers. You know, he's prone to turnovers. He loves taking a deep shot. You know, you yeah. know he loves, you know, getting the ball downfield. So let's force him into some um some down the distance, you know, some some third and tens or third and fifteens or second alone or whatever and and force him to have to throw that ball you know, downfield and apply, apply the pressure on him because, you know, he's he's not very mobile. He he will move on you, but it ain't mm-hmm. like he's a dual threat quarterback. He, he He's more of that type of quarterback that, that was sitting in the pocket. So 
when he do that, yeah. let's make him pay. He like a slightly faster uh, Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, he is. He, he's a slightly faster Ben Roethlisberger that, that can't see downfield. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I ain't mean to throw that shot at him, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. It, it, hey, it's, it's it's all good. It, it's all. But nah, good. It, but in we, his we, defense, we speak, we speak the truth. Yeah, we speak the truth. But in his defense, he did get the LASIK uh, eye surgery, so you don't see him squinting on the sidelines like like he used to <laughs> two or three years ago in Tampa. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> yeah. Well, what you what you think about that? You think we need to keep that pressure on him? I agree, because you know his back is jacked up right now. You know, he's wearing oh, that yeah. extra pad. He has, um, oh, God, I can't remember the injury, but he has like four. Like three or four vertebrae or something? Yeah. And he, yeah. Hey. And he hurt his, I didn't mean to cut you off, but and he hurt his yeah. ankle this week in practice. Hey, let me tell you, as somebody with experience with, um, like, uh, I had three back fractures um, okay. in my vertebrae few years ago i had you know i had a couple seizures and i fell and i fell straight down so, oh sorry to hear that man yeah if, if if he's playing through that and i'm sure it probably wasn't you know to the point of, of mine but I, I i i i literally feel his pain so right you know if it's if it's if one thing caroline needs to do they, they they need to they need to get to him get to him often make him uncomfortable i don't wish no harm on anybody but you know I, I i would love to see them get him out of the game i hope he's okay but you know i i would love to see them uh get him uncomfortable get him out of the game yeah like i said i i like james so, you know i, I you know I, mm-hmm. I think he's a he's a good player but once you step step in between those lines you fair game brother yes sir it's fair game yes sir yeah so my number two is the defensive bats making plays. We have yet to have a turnover on defense, whether it's interception, a uh, fumble yeah. recovery, a uh, cause fumble, or anything. We are like, I think, one of four or five teams in the league that hasn't had a turnover whatsoever. And for us to have cornerbacks like we have in J.C. Horn, Dante Jackson, and C.J. Henderson, when you have corners, in my opinion, like we have, there's no reason to why mm-hmm. we haven't been able to do that. And well, the, well the, the one reason, the one reason is the damn defensive play calling. You know, that I, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like that, that can be attributed to uh our lack of uh turnovers this year mm-hmm. you know but like i said i'm not gonna harp on that let me get back to my let me get back to number two because i'll get back on that again <laughs> and it made me mad, <laughs> yeah, it made speak, me mad on it, speak on it but yeah i, I just think that we, we need more consistency especially from uh jc horn and uh cj henderson mm-hmm. eliminating those dumb uh penalties those pass interference calls you know, yep. and just, you know, just play with better technique because we definitely going to need it going up against the Saints when you're talking about Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, um, and, and Jarvis uh, Landry. Jarvis Landry in the slot. I mean, we're we going to have our hands full. And I don't know if Alva Camara is going to be available or not, but if he is, you know, you got to deal with that two-headed monster coming out the backfield. So hey, we, we definitely – yeah, me too. But we definitely going to have a hands full with that. What what you think? Hey, I, I I totally agree. I totally agree. What I want again, the cornerbacks to do. Totally agree again. Did yeah, you? I I hey, I I agree. But I I add on to it. The cornerbacks okay. they need to play with confidence. They need to be confident in their abilities. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I I they're playing scared. You yeah. know, like they, they're playing, they're playing like they know they're going to get beat every play. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I, it's, I need... especially. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say because you you can see it in in, in Horn. You know, he he got the grabbies. You know, he he's he's grabbing people. He's scared he about right. to get beat. You know, he's grabbing them, trying to keep hold of them. And then in the first game, C.J. Henderson, all he had to do was turn around and get his eyes locate the ball 
and that would have been a pick. But instead, the first thing he does, he grabs Amari Cooper and, and, and yanks him just, down. He ain't just grab him. He like he tried toss him, toss him, toss him down to the ground by his head or something. I like I, I don't yeah, he, know what he was doing. Yeah, he but, tried to give him that old school hip toss back in uh WCW days. <laughs> I swear he did. But but you're you know, right but, though. Go ahead. No, I was just I was just gonna say, um, just reiterate my point that they 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 need to play with confidence, stop playing scared, trust in their abilities, and you know, and and just just get back to basics. I I, I think they're thinking too much. Yeah, I agree with you when it definitely when you definitely say uh, playing with confidence. You know, it's like I I don't know the full reason. You know, behind C.J. Henderson being traded from Jacksonville to Carolina, but all I know is I would love to see the C.J. Henderson that I saw in Florida, his freshman mm-hmm. and sophomore year, show up. Could yep. that C.J. Henderson play with a thousand percent confidence, and you couldn't tell him nothing? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I need to see that C.J. Henderson come back. And I need to see the J.C. Horn before the injury. Now, with J.C., I, I do kind of give him a little leeway because I still think he's trying to uh, overcome the injury that he had last year. And yeah. I think once once he, do, once he does that, once he puts that in the back of his mind and feel more comfortable, you know, or knowing that, hey, I made it through week one. I made it through week two. You know, as time goes on, I think that confidence will build, and I think we'll mm-hmm. see better play out of him. Now, you know, I gave Dante Jackson hell. You know, I always say that he's the weakest link, and the reason why I say that he's the weakest link this year is just sheer size because mm-hmm. he, he has played better uh, matchup, but when he played against uh, Donovan People Jones uh from Cleveland yeah. in week one, that's like a thirty to forty pound difference. You know? Mm-hmm. I, I so when 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 Jacoby Brissett was throwing the ball, you know, low low to uh Diamond People Jones, it was gonna make it hard. It, it made it hard for Dante mm-hmm. Jackson to get in there and try to strip the ball out. One, he too small, two he ain't stronger than Donovan People Jones. So, no. you know, that that's to me, that's a downfall, but it's not a downfall because I still feel like, just like I said before, if they would have applied enough pressure to Jacoby Brissett, you may have forced him into making some mistakes. Mm-hmm. We didn't we didn't force Jacoby to Brissett to uh beat us against Cleveland. Yeah. We I I, I don't Okay, I said I wasn't gonna do it, so I'm not gonna go there. Okay, moving <laughs> on. We we just didn't get it done. We just didn't get it yeah. done. We just didn't get it done. All right. Oh, and there you go. by the way, I do like Miles Hart Miles uh Hartsville as playing our nickelback. I wish he was yeah. back playing uh nickelback more than you know, like he did last year, because I thought he did a pretty good job, you know. Mm-hmm. And number three yeah. for me is uh Better quarterback play from Baker Mayfield. I yep. need him to be better. I need him to create better throwing lanes and not force any throws against this defense. Because if he do, the Saints defensive backs will make him pay. Mm-hmm. They will make him sure pay will. just as just as show as the church is on the other side of the road. They will make <laughs> him pay. Listen. That 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 is one team, them in Tampa, that you do not want to just go out there and trying to be a gunslinger, as if you just better than the defensive backs, or you yeah. try to treat their defensive backs like they garbage. They will mm-hmm. make you pay quick, fast, in a hurry. So I just want them to be a. Hey, if the check down is there, throw it to them. Whether it's you know whether it's to a tight end, whether it's to Christian McCaffrey. And you can even tell last week how Christian McCaffrey was getting very frustrated, very frustrated when there were just like simple uh, plays or checkdowns 
for him to get the ball to him even Mm -hmm. in the in the midst of the rush you know when you're being rushed like that your check down is your go-to and i can't think of anybody that's any better in a check down situation than christian mccaffrey all you gotta do is get the ball in his hands all you gotta do Mm -hmm. is get the ball in his hands and let him do let him do his thing you know what i'm saying let him work but oh yeah just just make better decisions you know i think with the offensive line as they become better, I think Baker will become better. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I know we harp on him, you know, getting the balls better down and stuff like that. Granted, that, that was too many in, in week one. But, hell, I seen J- Joe Flacco get balls better down. I seen Justin Herbert mm-hmm. balls get better down. Like, everybody, everybody. gets their ball yeah. better down, you know. Kyler mm-hmm. Murray ain't no taller than Bacon Mayfield. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bacon Mayfield yeah. is the same height that Drew Brees was. Mm-hmm. Now, can can he find a, you know better throwing lanes or create better throwing lanes? You know, before he released the ball, sure he can. I think he knows that as well. Mm-hmm. So, give me a take on that. What 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 you think about that? I agree with you on that also, and I'll take it a step further. Um. I think they need to put Baker in better positions as far as I go back to this again, as far as the play calling, um, let them roll out the pocket some, you know what I mean? When watching the Giants game, when he had those quick three-step drops and even back in the um, the Cleveland game, it, it, it seems like those were getting batted down more as the game went on last week with the Giants. You see him t- yeah. taking maybe five, seven, five to seven step drop. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't talk. But you know, you're taking those longer drops. He 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 had a little more time, a little bit more of a pocket, and he was finding lanes. So, right. you know, may- maybe some adjustments can be made. We'll see. But I'm sure he's going to get a ball batted down Sunday. I, I'm 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 about a hundred percent sure. If it's one or two, I I'll, I'll take it. It's, it's, it's not going to be that big of a deal to me. I, I'm i not ready to, you know, I, I'm not ready to, to, to give up on Baker already. You know, I, I still right. like him. But as he said, he takes full responsibility for his issues and he has to fix them. So right. we'll see if he can go out there and, and, and put his money where his mouth is. Well, to, like you said, to his, um, in his defense, he only I think had two balls batted down in the uh the Giants game. And my thing is Baker is a is a lot better quarterback when the play action is working. So we can get yes. that running game yes. established, get the running game going, you know, on first mm-hmm. and second downs, you, you know, to 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 either pick up the first down or make it third and short. Mm-hmm. Then we can uh, start using some of that play action because now yeah. you're forcing the linebackers to play a little closer. You know, you got the defensive ends coming in. They're looking more for the tackle than instead of batting the ball down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we can yeah. get the run game going and get the defense focused on that. Then we can hit them, you know, with the play action and, and maybe take a deep shot or, you know, something, you know, intermediate or, or whatever. I, I think the passing game – will pick up once we create the running game, a more consistent yeah, and, and, running game. And to piggyback on that, because you know they're going to put Cam Jordan on Icky all game. If if, if I was them, I, I, so? I'd have him on Icky. I'd have him on Icky side of the line the entire game if, if I was the Saints. So, like you said, get the play action going. Get something, some misdirection. Get something to get that defensive line, you know, uh, uncomfortable and, and and out of sorts per se, you know what right. I mean. Something where Baker can get back there and get some throwing lanes and and, and get some passes out. But and, and also he's going to get pressure when the pressure comes. Like you said, he's got to find his check down, whether that's Christian McCaffrey or whoever earlier. Hopefully it's Christian McCaffrey and not Chuba Hubbard because Chuba Hubbard as a check down ain't worth a damn. He can't <laughs> catch. Well. 
I tell you what, I, I I surely don't appreciate you giving the uh the Saints any any ammunition by telling them to put uh uh what's his name? What what's 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 uh Cam Jordan defensive end? Yeah, Cam Jordan over across from Icky. Let him stay over there and do his battle with uh T- Taylor Moe. Don't give him no no ideas. We we'll deal with the other Hey, look, uh, I ain't giving him no We'll deal with Davenport over there hey. on the left side. I, I ain't giving them no more ammo than the other forty thousand people doing what we doing, telling telling the same thing. I'm sure so. <laughs> right, Look, it, it right. won't be my fault. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I I I would I would say I'm not I'm not gonna say that Icky would just completely dominate or win that battle, but I yeah. think Icky does better when the pass rusher isn't a speed rusher. I think he yeah. does better when it's when it's someone like Cam Jordan or Marcus Davenport, somebody that got some size and some bulk that may not be as fast, and he can uh get his paws mm-hmm. on him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, because he did if, good if last he, week. It was it was the scheme that got him last week. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that was the only sack that he gave up. They 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 uh credited him. With uh, giving up that sack, mm-hmm. like I, I don't really know what he could have done. Uh, well, he he could he could have did it better, but like you said, he's a rookie play. He playing in his second game last week, yeah. so you know. But yeah, yeah I, I think overall, you know, we we apply the pressure, Jameis Winston. You know, we finally get our defensive backs making plays, and we get Baker to. Um, get you know get better quarterback play from baker mayfield and along with your uh your three reasons i think those is i think those six things is a recipe for success uh come sunday against the let us pray let let us pray let us pray let us pray (laughs) let us pray that the saints do not come marching in Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I don't want them to be right. nowhere in that number. You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> nowhere. Oh my God! Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. We 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 need to get off. We get, we need to get off to a good start. We need mm-hmm. to establish the run early. And if we're playing good on defense, we need to keep applying the pressure. I mean, I, I think we should do that from snap one. Make yep. him beat us. Make him beat us. And it, I, I'll i say it again. Anytime that we played Jameis, whether he was in Tampa Bay or New Orleans, when we applied pressure to him, it always worked out in our favor because we always got turnovers out of it. Mm-hmm. We always flipped the field. You know, we got him off his spot, got him uncomfortable, and we were able to run away with the game. When we yep. get that pressure on him, we need to keep it on him. When we get our exactly. foot on his neck, we need to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and don't let him breathe until the game is over. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and also, we, we need to um get a note to Dante Jackson to tell him, um kind of like, uh, remember in the Bad Boy movies, in the first one, um when he um, uh, Will Smith told Martin, like that's how you drive a car. Remember when he tackled old boy <laughs> yeah. last week on, the, on that on that fir- in the first yeah. quarter? Somebody yeah. get a message to Dante tell, and that's how you tackle. Yeah, <laughs> make, and, and, and make sure he hear that every game for the game. That's how you tackle. I need him yeah. to go out there and tackle like that every game from here on out. Boy, you crazy! <laughs> shock, shock the hell out of me. I jumped out my chair. I said, "Oh my goodness." Oh yeah, I ain't gonna tell. You, I I ain't gonna tell you no lie. I, I got big. I was like, "What in the hell?" Did, what, what, I said, "Was that Dante?" I saw. Yeah. I swear, like I saw the number twenty six, but I thought somebody had to switch the jersey on the sideline just for two seconds. Just for two yeah. seconds, I was like, "I know he just didn't just come up and just square him up like that." Yo, oh squared him damn. up, drove him into the ground. I was I'm like, like "My damn. man," I was like, "Okay." <laughs> All right, just just make me eat all my words. What I said about him this <laughs> off season, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey I'm that's, not that's, mad that's at it. That's a good it. thing, though. I'm not mad at it. 
Well, that would do it for us on Two Fans in the Stands Week 3 preview of the Carolina Panthers versus the New Orleans Saints at home at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Check us out after the game as we give a full game review of the Panthers and Saints matchup. As always, Panthers Nation, keep pounding.